uh, trim the dingleberries. So I, I definitely understand the tweet. Here's what I will say about the entire altercation, the resignation, and just Marjorie Green <laughs> being is is like, hell yeah. You get what you voted for. You get, <laughs> you reap what you sow. I'm serious about this. You want to pretend and look, Debbie Dingle, that's fine. It is, it is unneighborly. It is rude to yell at somebody as they're trying to sort of have a, a, a press conference or whatever. 100%. That being said, look at the Republican Party. They just stormed the Capitol building on January 6th and tried yeah. to overturn a Democratic election. This is politics in America right now. So either we do something about it and take these Republicans seriously and try and you know oust them and get them out or not. But like the entire respectability politics clearly are a hundred percent dead. So I'm not saying you get down in the trenches with them and fight, you know, you know, Dingleberry a uh, uh, Dingleberry. But like I do think that it is just yeah. so funny because it is a nice reminder that oh yeah, our politics they're utter crap. Oh, that's funny. Um, we're we're going to skip to really fast do the H block or else it's going to end up being archived. So if we get ready for that, I just want to briefly mention, I love that she yells like, why don't, you, why don't you try to be a Christian, respect life. By the way, go to my website and sign up where you can get a high powered sniper rifle <laughs> right now. Like again, that man, what a movement you've got there. Um, a bowel movement, am I right? Anyway, uh, are we ready to jump in this last story? Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> You might think that Rudy Giuliani couldn't fall any farther, but apparently he can. He has allegedly be, been banned from Fox News at least for three months. And it's apparently because of his promotion of the conspiracy theories about the election. Not that they're wrong, but that they can theoretically open up Fox News to legal liability. Lawsuits from companies like Dominion and Smartmatic. Uh, that uh, outlets like OAN and uh, and others have already real was it Newsmax have already been um, suffering mm -hmm. from. This order apparently was issued from the top, so I don't know I don't know exactly who that is. If it's the hosts or if it's even beyond that, I don't know how much desire there was remaining to have Rudy Giuliani on, um, but apparently uh, they have been sued. And they filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit, claiming that it was only seeking to cover both sides of the argument. But again, when you're having people on that are, you know, you know what they're going to say about these companies, you know that it's not true, but you're providing them the platform, that seems like an issue. So apparently that's why he was not on for the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, despite being a celebrity on the right for his supposed leadership in the wake of that attack. So. He apparently isn't going to be on at least for a bit, Francesca. What do you think about that? Yeah, I love how Murdoch's like, mm, 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 toss him. <laughs> you know, like I'm done. Like whatever, wherever it came from, like I don't know. They they're going to go back to him eventually once they get rid of the lawsuit. I do think the Dominion stuff is, it's at once. Fun and wonderful, and I'm so glad that OAN and Newsmax have had those hilarious moments of them trying to be like, uh, just so everyone's aware, uh, there is no proof that Dominion actually yeah. uh, falsified any of those um, voting records. Blah, blah blah blah. They were not flipping votes, but it also is so sad because we've been relying on this litigious ass country to protect our voting rights and a private corporation yeah. like Dominion to protect our voting rights instead of like Congress. The Senate, our Constitution, to defend voting rights, right? Like the courts, and so it is at once wonderful. Good riddance to Giuliani. You know he's gonna be. I don't know what he's gonna do. I mean, well, like, are we, there we ball can't show you the video where he is right he's, now? But he's still on Cameo. Maybe for the yeah. right amount, he'll do a ball pit on Cameo. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but you're totally right. The fact that this. Oh, I hope the courts save us. That's all that we have at this point. How sad at this point. Despite the Democrats being in charge, this is all that we have to defend ourselves. Anyway, Rudy, enjoy your brief vacation. Uh, that said, Francesca, it was very, it was great having you back on the show. People, I'm sure, have gotten very used to you. It's gonna be weird for them that you won't be around for the next few days. But <laughs> thank you for joining us for Fantastic Monday. Thank you, John. And we, of course, will be doing a top ten list. A top 10 myths we wish were true, which will be available to our tier two and tier three YouTube members a little bit later on today. Um, Indisputable is coming up. Uh, you have to go to youtube.com slash indisputable tyt, but that is just a brief trip. And then uh, he'll be on with Michael Moore, so definitely look forward to that. And until next time, 
Stay safe out there, stay sane out there. I'll see you soon.
Welcome. I'm your host, Rashad Rich. It's indisputable. Good to be with you. Here's the thing a deal is a deal. See, I'm actually happy. I'm elated. As a matter of fact, I'm damn proud that progressives are standing up to corporate Democrats. You see what happens when you get some numbers on your side? You can't really be bullied like you used to. There was a time, ladies and gentlemen, when progressives made deals, negotiated with Democrats, corporate Democrats in order to get a better policy for you and I. They were always bullied at the end of the deal, where many of the Democrats started to look like Republicans in policy rather than true progressives. Well, that day is done. Progressives are holding their feet to the fire. I have with me to talk about this and a little more, none other than the legendary Michael Moore, Oscar winning filmmaker and an extraordinary person. Brother, I told you before the show, man, I just appreciate all you do for the culture. Uh, host of the critically acclaimed Rumble with Michael Moore podcast. Make sure you check out that podcast. It is amazing. My brother, how are you? I'm I'm well. Thank you for having me on. I'm honored and and uh, uh, thanks for what you just said about uh, progressives, liberals, Democrats uh, having a spine. Finally, uh, it's the only way we're ever going to fix anything. Uh, we have to stand up and 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 yes, sometimes that means you're going to lose. But um, you know, go back to any part of our history. You know, Martin Luther King didn't. He he never said, "I'm marching uh, today," but I'm only marching so uh, that only half of Black Americans can have their civil rights. You know, they when women got the vote, they didn't say uh, only women who are married can have the vote. You, you, know, you there's there's no more uh, uh, cutting the pie. Splitting it off, uh, it's it's civil rights for everybody. It's mm-hmm. equal rights for everybody. That's right. And and it's and it's in this case with this with this um, human infrastructure bill. We're, what are we talking about here? Uh, we're we're going to make it so that old people can get a hearing aid. We're going to add that to Medicare in this bill. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna allow our elderly to go to the dentist. And not have to worry about the bill. We're going to put that into. It's in this bill, in this infrastructure bill, putting that into into a, a, a Medicare. You know, go down the list of things of what uh, these progressives are standing for. This isn't some crazy stuff. This is real. This is childcare. Anybody who's had kids living through this pandemic, mm-hmm. man. I mean, to how how. Uh, I don't. I mean, my child is now an adult. I don't know how parents have done this, but this infrastructure bill is to help take care of that. Is if there's so many great things in this bill, and if progressives back down, back down now, here's what's going to happen in next year's election. Um, people like you and I will vote, but a lot of people are going to go. What did they do? I voted for these. That's right. People, they didn't do anything for me. Mm-hmm. What could be easier to get passed than the John Lewis voting rights bill? And they couldn't do that. The Democrats couldn't do that. They they couldn't they they couldn't pass the George Floyd Justice and Police Act bill. They couldn't do that. Why am I going to vote? So, but then I'll say, well, okay, I have to vote. We all should vote. But here's what it's gonna call, it's gonna be a depressed vote, which means, um. And I only have one class of, in political science uh, <laughs> in my one and a half years in college, but I know what this means. A depressed vote is uh, people are going to vote, but they're not going to be excited about it because the Democrats didn't do anything during these two years. So they're not going to actively go out and bring 10 people with them. That's they're not going to volunteer every Saturday in the month before the election to go out door to door. They're not going to be excited. Because what are they to be excited for? We couldn't pass voting rights. We couldn't fix our broken police system. We couldn't give hearing aids to the elderly. Well, what am I excited about here? What what is it I'm? And what I would say is, um, first of all, I would say to Joe Manchin and, and Kirsten Cinema, shame on you. Really, 
Yeah, the epitome of sellout. Yeah, we did elect Joe as President of the United States. Got 10 million more votes than the other guy. But we elected Joe Biden, not Joe Manchin. That's right. Come on, brother. I don't, this man, uh, you know, he should just call up Joe Biden and say, listen, uh, I don't even know why I'm not voting for this, but I will vote for it if you will do X, Y, and Z for the poor people of West Virginia that I represent. Do that for them. Give me the credit for it, and uh, and I'm and I'll I'll go your way. Isn't that that's what old politics used to be about? Well, that's the horse trading game, right, the horse uh, Michael? Tra- yeah. And right now, frankly, uh, and and it used to be called pork. Uh, I'd yeah, say pork spending. Joe. And Kirsten, as much pork, make it pork day mm-hmm. in DC. Pork for them, but it's because it's really it's not it's not for their it's not going in their pockets. It's going for the people of Arizona and Georgia and and West Virginia and all the places that need it. Just give it to them. Yeah. But don't but but to let this moment go by in history, this would be the saddest thing I think if this happens. Well, he's destroying not yeah. only good policy. Now, literally, yeah. you know this, Michael. Yeah. What progressives are saying is really for Joe Biden to keep his original campaign promise. That's the irony of the whole damn thing. They're yeah. literally holding Joe Biden closer to his policy agenda that he campaigned on than Joe Biden is holding himself accountable right. to the policy agenda that he campaigned on. So now you have this fork in the road, right? Yes. Where you must have all of your Democrats support this, which means you can now effectively do some things in the minority inside of the Democratic Party that you may not be able to do later. You can Correct. do that now. Correct. Um, we're in this um, social reality, brother. Yes. Where people on the other side of the political aisle, they're no longer even having the same conversations that we have. There was a time in politics. We were both having the same or very similar conversations. Now, they're not even talking about equitable principles. They're not talking about um, higher education affordability. They're not even talking about these things. And we are at a place where we're literally willing to allow them to back out of a, a, a human infrastructure bill that could change the reality and lives of everyone in this country. It's outcomes that they're afraid of. Yeah, and and what I would say to these two senators is, um, guess what? There's an election next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, Manchin's not up until 2024. But what we will do, if you cause this thing to go down the drain, what we will do, uh, there are a number of Republican senators that have already announced their retirement, uh, North Carolina, um, uh, Rob Portman in Ohio. Uh, Toomey in Pennsylvania. These are blue, blue states of Pennsylvania, and and uh, and we've got a purple state with uh, with North Carolina. Uh, the senator, Republican senator from Missouri, is not going to run. So we will make sure that we run great Democrats in these states. And instead of having 50 in the Senate next year after next November's election, uh, we'll have 52. We may have 54. And we won't need you, Mr. Manchin, and so you won't hold this power over us ever again. We'll never forget that you did this. We'll work to primary you when it's time to do that. But you cannot stop the American people. It's not just that there's these 60 progressives. This is also the fact that the majority of our fellow Americans, every poll, go to any poll, every poll shows the majority of our fellow Americans believe women should be paid the same as men. That's right. The majority of our fellow Americans believe the minimum wage should be at least $15 an hour. The majority of our fellow Americans believe the government has no right to tell a woman what to do with her body. The majority of our fellow, just go down the list. The majority of our fellow Americans are actually progressive. They are demanding this, they want this. and. And to remember Biden in the Senate, he was not a progressive. And so the fact that he's been able to pivot because he understands the country he lives in. Oh, Yeah, that's right. The American people, they want this voting rights bill passed. They want to see policing changed. They want these things. 
And so I, as president, am going to give it to them. To his credit, that that he's pivoted this way, I think is a remarkable thing. And I give him much credit for that. But um, this is not a lost cause. We are not going to lose uh, this. We may lose a battle, but we won't lose, uh, we will not lose the war. I like how you said that. And I remind people constantly, Michael, that there is no finality in democracy, not true democracy. Right. You get opportunity after opportunity. And sometimes it's like a chess game. It's not about taking the pieces off the board, but it's about creating position so that you can make the ultimate checkmate. And sometimes you may have to lose a piece or two in order to get the position that you need to win the whole game. Brother, it has been a pleasure having you on Indisputable. Looking forward to your podcast. I wanna make sure everybody checks it out. Gives it a high rating, Rumble with Michael Moore, one of the smartest cats out there. Thank you so much, brother. So kind to say that and thank you for having me on day and and allowing me the opportunity to, to say these things. My pleasure, come back anytime. All right, take care. You too. All right, um, that's the big homie Michael Moore. Uh, we got a lot of show left. All right, um, let me bring your attention to Something really ridiculous, okay? This is a Methodist University, a white college student who belongs to a sorority decided to make a presentation to talk about how ugly black people are. I kid you not, Uh, this is a real presentation. Um, A white college student at Methodist University has come under fire after doing a PowerPoint presentation on what features she finds ugly using only pictures of black students on the school's football team. Here's the graphic, let me put that back up. It's a damn shame. According to the Instagram account, Fayetteville Hip Hop, the female student put on the presentation in the dining hall and mentioned characteristics such as big nostrils, dreads and big lips as ugly. Once again, she highlighted her fellow college students to do this. She used photographs of black students on the football team to detail her argument and also used photos of white students over the years as a comparison for attractiveness. So black, ugly, white, attractive, black, big nose, dreadlocks, big lips, unattractive, all of these white people, highly attractive. This happened on a university campus. The account says the student's name is Taylor and that she is a member of Alpha Data Pi. That's a sorority on campus. Both Taylor's Instagram and the sorority's Instagram have been disabled. Sorority has now been suspended. The student, Taylor, sent a statement to a member of the football team she referred to in the presentation. So let me read this statement in full, okay? Hello. First off, I want to apologize to you and your entire family. I did not mean for any of this to be targeted towards individuals and certainly did not mean any of this in a malicious way. So let me just pause there, okay? I don't know how you did not mean it to be targeted toward an individual when literally you decided to fully prepare and edit and get pictures. You know how hard it is to make a damn PowerPoint presentation. You don't, you don't accidentally make a PowerPoint presentation. She put time, energy, effort, research, and everything into this. It continues, I am beyond sorry, and I understand that it does not make up for it. This situation is being handled by the school, and I am fully aware how my actions cause pain to others, and I will accept full responsibility, the punishment that is decided with this matter with the school. Again. I am truly sorry and did not mean for this to hurt anybody. And it was not targeted at African Americans in any way. Let's put up the graphic again. Let's, okay, she says that was not targeted to African African Americans. Now remember the context, all of the black people ugly. And then she made another presentation, all of the white people attracted. But in her apology, She says she did not mean to hurt anyone. It was not targeted at African Americans in any way. I can promise that. Again, I am very sorry and will be accepting responsibility 
for my actions. Um, let's just say, for the sake of argument, what she says is true. I don't believe it. I think she is remorseful that she got caught. I don't think what she's saying in this half baked apology is true. But let's say it is true. Let's say she decided to do this really insensitive, highly racist thing, and she is not aware of her racism. Well, that's called implicit bias. What is implicit bias? Research on implicit bias suggests that people can act on the basis of prejudice and stereotypes without intending to do so. The definition doesn't fit what she did. You mean to tell me that literally you talked about black people, you put pictures up of only black people, you then referred to traits that you attribute to only black people, and then you made the comparison to whiteness as attractive and these black people as unattractive. You mean to tell me that you are engaging in implicit bias, not intentional bias, um, by using your basis of prejudice, saying that it's not connected to race. It's a ridiculous apology and it's a ridiculous reality that we're living in. Um, we're gonna continue to follow that story, but naturally um, the institution has a lot to answer for as well, all right? Okay. There's a bus driver, and I'm really trying to get more information on this. But there's a bus driver who has been stabbed to death in front of children. And this happened in Pasco, Washington. This was a Washington State elementary school. The bus driver is Richard Landhart, 72 years of age, okay? He was taken to a regional hospital and he died of these injuries. He was in the process of boarding children when the man walked on the board and attacked him, walked on board and attacked him. Uh, this is Longfellow Elementary, let's put up a picture um, of the bus and the school area. According to Tri-City Herald, the bus driver was picking up children after classes ended for the day at Longfellow Elementary School. When a man got on the bus, said the police, it's not clear when or why the man boarded the bus. Police were called at 3.09 PM for reports of a stabbing on 301 North 10th Avenue. After the driver was assaulted, he apparently lost control of the bus, drove over a curb and sidewalk before hitting some bushes and a tree at the school. Here's the irony, the attacker literally waited for the police. According to the report, the attacker did not leave the area and waited for police to arrive and cooperated with authorities as he was arrested, said the police captain. Children in the bus and others outside the school were taken back inside. None of them were hurt, thank God. Parents were called by the school to pick up their children. This is a statement to school employees by the superintendent. We are devastated by the tragic loss of one of our own. Our focus right now is on supporting our students and staff who are deeply impacted by this tragedy. School counselors have been made available. I highlight this story to remind everyone that even though the dangers of COVID in school systems, that's, that's a real danger. These parents coming to schools, fighting school board members, protesting, getting into physical combat with other students, real dangers. But there are other real dangers as well, random acts of violence as well as targeted acts of violence. And now even though no kid was injured on this bus, they are psychologically injured because of what they saw. This should be a sober reminder, especially to parents like myself and others. While we may focus on some of these other dynamics connected to the school system, let us not forget that there are other dangers out there. We have to be mindful to take care of our babies from top to bottom. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay.
I'm old enough that I remember when Captain Crunch put the berries in there. Yay, Crunch berries! And I was like, ooh, the fake berries. Remember? We're gonna try that. We did a story <laughs> back in the day about how a woman sued, uh, I don't know, General Mills. <laughs> She'd been eating it for four years, right. believing that it was actual berries. Yeah, yeah, she's like, these aren't real berries at all. Yeah. I'm like, I got news for you, Captain Crunch isn't really a captain or a person. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me now, legendary whistleblower and American hero, Edward Snowden. First question is, hey, where are you? <laughs> I'm in my apartment in Moscow. All of a sudden, in the studio, Jim Gaffigan, everybody. Mental illness is you know, completely undiagnosed in our society. It's not about a particular administration. It's about a broken system of power, and through that, really, the instrumentalization of a system of not justice, but injustice. People understand whether they claim to deny climate change or not. Our collective house is in crisis. We're also dealing with the legacy of 40 years of economic policies that have made people's lives more precarious. Sometimes you gotta force people into their humanity. Sometimes you have to shake people into empathy. Senator Elizabeth Warren joins us in the studio. Healthcare is a basic human right, and we are fighting for basic human rights. In order to actually achieve that vision of everyone having access to the same resources and getting to determine the outcome of their life, we have a lot of work to do, and it needs to start right now. Here's something you may not know. When you deposit your money in a big bank, it doesn't just sit safe and secure in a vault. Instead, your money could end up building oil pipelines, mining for coal, or drilling in the Arctic. So if you're concerned about the planet, give your money something good to do. Make the move to green with Aspirations Fossil Fuel Free account and join the thousands each week who are switching to save their dollars and save the planet at the same time. Welcome to the Damage Report, I'm John Iderola. This is gonna be a big one. What Donald Trump has done as president has cut taxes for the wealthy and made life better for rich people. But he's made life worse for poor people. We're making America great again by throwing more money at the military to destroy other countries because that makes us great instead of investing it in ourselves. That it's Donald Trump and it's Stephen Miller. The choosing is based on wanting to create cruel and inhumane conditions to scare other people away from ever coming to the United States. The opportunity to make money off of tragedy is the American way. There is only one place to put garbage people in the trash. You never had so much access to so much information with so little idea of what the hell is going on. What does enforcing our borders have to do with traumatizing children? Absolutely nothing. I think a sane person could say the current situation we have right now is radical. But what we're doing is literally making the world more like hell. That's a warning sign. ShopTYT.com now has books. One of them is Ryan Grimm's book, We've Got People. That's a saying that AOC said, they've got money, we've got people. It's the best tracing of the AOC victory I've seen anywhere. It's the most accurate and it's got great details. The book actually goes all the way back to Jesse Jackson and how he's the original Bernie Sanders. If you wanna know how we're gonna win going forward, those lessons are super important and they're in Ryan's book. So check it out right now at ShopTYT.com. We found the perfect person to lead the army, Allison Hartson. The establishment media works hand in glove with our corporate legislators and our corporate legislators look work hand in glove with the corporation. And we're going to make it so that it's a decentralized force throughout the country so that we can quickly identify stories, quickly identify troll farms and go in and neutralize the enemy and then start building responsible media throughout the country and on every platform available.
All right, welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Um, don't forget the Excel bullpen. Myself and Charlie Kirk debated actually for an hour and 40 minutes plus that entire debate. You don't wanna miss it. If you saw that one hour, we ended up talking about racism in America, where he asked me was um, Jefferson one of my heroes? I said my hero is Harriet Tubman. You have to see that debate. I don't know what made Charlie Kirk want to debate race with me, but he did. And you can find that full debate on the podcast, anywhere you get your podcast, okay? Anywhere you get your podcast, Acast, Apple, Spotify, it's there. Make sure you connect, like it, give us five stars, follow it, give us five stars, okay? All right, we got the conversation coming up. 5.30 Eastern time, 2.30 Pacific time, tyt.com slash live, right before the Young Turks. Jank talks to Maryland State Delegate about his efforts to remove cops from schools. Should be a great, great conversation. You can get all of those remarkable interviews at youtube.com forward slash tyt conversation. All right, tyt member, RS King Black Dragon, rejoice for Dr. Richie, warrior of facts. Slayer of Charlie Kirk is here. <laughs> you know what's interesting? And I gotta say this, that even on the Turning Point USA YouTube page, a lot of Republicans actually gave me a lot of love. I did not expect that. And I've been tagged by Republicans all over the country who said, hey, I actually disagreed with A, B, and C until I listened to you. Now I only disagree with C. That's how you open minds, facts. Clear, concise data, and an authentic approach about what you believe. Mary Bryan, will the age still be lowered to 60? This would help my husband and actually make it to retirement. We could change jobs to ones that are not killing us physically. I am 57, he is 59. I, I, I hope to God, yes, okay? We'll follow up on that. Make it see the silver hair dragon, big lips. When I was young, I was often told that my full lips were very attractive, so they're full because I'm white. And big if they're black. Wow, that's an interesting observation. YouTube super chat. Dragonheart, you are amazing, and you are amazing as well, Dragonheart. Thank you for that. Matt Silvers, finally, Michael Moore, TYT. I've been waiting for that. Thank you. We had the big homie, Mike V. Um, now you know why they do the doll test every year, and it's the same results every year. TJA, you are so right, Michael Moore, President Biden, Democrats voted out a traitor, proved that you would do what you were voted in office for, Biden, in the filibuster. My sentiment exactly, Twitch, Frankie, underscore Z13. Progressives have always had spines, it's the dim leaders that has always been fought off. Dragon Penny, cinema doesn't give a damn about the people in Arizona. No true words have been spoken, okay. A Detroit cop sucker punched a man who wasn't trying to do anything. Totally unprovoked, 100% unprovoked. A, now a former Detroit cop is facing criminal charges. Uh, it begins, this is so insane, it begins with a former officer asking a citizen, do you need help? The citizen responds, don't worry about it, I'm good. An officer is then heard insulting the clothing of the man. You're wearing a weird ass coat, he says. From there, it gets worse. You can see a former officer, his name is Anthony Smith, tell his partner to hold his things. Hinting a confrontation is about to unfold. Um, so let's put up one of the graphics, okay? Black male walking down the street, bothering no one. The police, they start to engage him. The guy wants to fight him. He wants to fight. The police, they want to fight this guy. This guy's not bothering anyone. The man replies, you're, the, you're a police officer. Hey, why would I try to fight you? You're a police officer. The officer tells him, shoot your shot. Now remember, the officer then told another cop, hey man, hold my stuff. This guy's doing nothing to this cop, hold my things. The guy responds, but you're a police officer, shoot your shot. Seconds later, 
the man removed his shirt to prove that he is not armed. He did not even remove his shirt in an aggressive way. He just wanted to let these cops know, I do not have a weapon. And when he did so, the officer goes into his face and sucker punches the man. After punching the citizen, Smith and others decided to make an arrest for resisting and obstructing. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. Literally, this man, and come back to me. This man was only walking down the street. He's walking down the street. The police, they decided to bother him. Now, they provoked this whole thing from top to bottom. He never tried to fight the officer back. He never struck the officer. He was sucker punched. He made sure the officers knew he had no weapons. He took off his clothing to prove this. Why does he have to do this? Here's what I think happened. Now, this is speculation, but based on what I've seen, it seems as if those cops made a bet among themselves that the next person who walked by, they were going to do this to that person. And don't tell me that's impossible. Don't tell me, oh no, the police would never do such a thing because we have literally seen cops flip a coin to determine if they're going to arrest the citizen or not before they even engaged the citizen. So we know it happens. When you look at the facts of this particular situation, nothing was natural about this encounter. It did not escalate. It did not have a criminal element. They only could arrest the guy for obstruction and he didn't even try to resist the arrest. He was simply asking, why am I being arrested? I didn't do anything wrong. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, here's an image of the man um, without a shirt on, and this is how he was punched. Let's go to that image. He literally had his hands behind his back and was sucker punched. He wanted to make sure he was not a threat. He did not pose the optics of a threat, and he was sucker punched in the face. We've learned now that Officer Smith has resigned and will appear in court November 12th. Police say other officers were also suspended. While this happened back in December of 2018, the attorney Dion Webster Cox says she's filed a lawsuit. That's what makes it current. She has now filed a lawsuit because her client suffered a false arrest, false imprisonment, emotional distress, assault and battery and gross negligence. Now, this is the same department where a cop was charged with punching a mentally ill naked woman. Let's put a picture of that cop up. Same department, same police agency, that's Corporal Dwayne Jones. Punched a naked mentally ill woman. And then this happened, there's another one. Remember the cop who knocked out an unarmed black man walking on the sidewalk, that one went viral. Same police agency, same people, same individuals. Now they are reluctant to give us the names of everybody. We're still trying to get the other cops who were involved in the original incident that we're highlighting on the show today. But they didn't give us all of the names. There are many that were connected. We even think some that were out of the view of the camera. Um, but here's the police chief. His name is James E. White. Yep. There you have it, right? Serve and protect. Damn shame. All right, switching gears. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel free. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Hey, Beth? No. How's it going, Beth? I think you know what we're, what we're doing here, right? I can cause a scene if you don't want to be honest. Who's this? We're Dads Against Predators. Okay. So we catch people that are trying to solicit online kids. Well, I'm glad you're here. Right. Because the only reason I came down was the wipe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why would you want to wipe it? Because you were doing something wrong, wasn't you? Because I was trying to 
Whatever. I have all the screenshots. Yeah. So I can make a scene. Let's be honest. What did you want that fifteen year old girl come here for? To wipe the phone. This is such a sad story. This is a serious one, okay? Very serious. Because it's dealing with an alleged child predator whose carinicity is also off the charts, okay? There's more video. Here's the second part of that. Because I didn't realize. I thought you wanted her to have fun with your husband and you were scared she was a cop. No. That's what you said. I asked yeah, you said. so that you could come so I could wipe your phone. Because why would you want to wipe the phone? Attention. You knew she was. You knew she. How old she was? You kept on no, saying, I, "I'm scared. I, I I don't want the cops to come. I don't want to get in trouble." So let's be honest, or I'm going to start yelling. Will you please listen? Okay, I'll listen. Because right, you're really cutting me off right now, and that's not, not exactly cool. I don't yeah. think it's cool to meet up with children. Yeah, see, I don't either. You do. But I didn't pay attention to the age. You did. Until after the fact. Okay, so here's the allegation from Dads Against Predators. There was a back and forth with who she believed to be a 15 year old girl. She wanted to solicit this girl for sexual purposes. She also made mention that the 15 year old girl could join her and her husband. The 15 year old girl or what she believed to be a 15 year old child told her where to meet her at. And that is where the engagement begins. Now she's saying that this guy is being rude to her. Here's another video. You said you said you were telling her husband you're, she's only three years older than your son, but five seconds ago you were just talking about have you ever done anything with a girl? So let's be honest. I needed her to come so I could wipe the phone. Why did you need her to come to wipe the phone? Because, you know how stupid that sounds? Yeah, do you not realize that I was Think of a lie, think of a lie. To the age, which I've already said three or four times now, right? Then why would you want to wipe the phone? Okay, now the information that we have is provided to us directly by this post, the individual who's there, Dads Against Predators, big ups to them and the work they do continuing to expose individuals um, who would try and lure a child for sexual reasons. I just wanna remind people that sexual predators can come in all shapes and sizes, all backgrounds, ethnicities and religions. You have to be vigilant, now obviously, this particular individual, her carinicity is astounding, even when she is caught in this trap. Okay, we got another one, double dose. You wanna call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're gonna feel free, back off! I'm gonna tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. This male Karen literally beat himself up. Now he's screaming to a bystander, he's doing this from a chair that's not connected to a table. I don't know why he's sitting in a chair looking directly at the street crowd, okay? He's just talking and yelling and screaming. Guy walks up to him, you see what happens. Let's put up the graphic of him being in mid flight. The other one. Okay, that's good, yes. Um, that
that's when he knew he really had made a bad life decision. Obviously, he's been waiting to try this move for a long time, obviously. Who gets up and tries to do some kind of, I don't know what it's called, I'm not a kung fu guy. Um, uh, here it is, yeah, he, he's, yeah. See, this is what happens when you practice fighting in a mirror. Okay, um, this was a really interesting uh, situation. Here's what we know, um, tough male Karen shown in his chair, not attached to a table while arguing with another man outside. He says, shut your effing mouth, says the male Karen inside the restaurant. Uh, he jaws back and forth with the other man until he stands up and the man standing outside comes swiftly in his direction. Now, let me remind you, the man that walked toward him never, Never physically assaulted, never defended himself, could have, could have, but did not because the man did a good job at beating himself up. As he approaches, you clearly see the male Karen throws what would have been a hellacious kick, lifting himself off the ground. It was embarrassing, he connects with air and finds himself on his back. What were you thinking, dude? We got more, it's indisputable, stick and stay. Every day, the Young Turks delivers two hours of solid, fact-based, timely news and progressive commentary on all the day's most important stories. We keep our viewers informed while also providing perspective and insight on the news we cover so you understand not only what's happening, but also what's happening behind the scenes, the stories behind the stories. Gee, I wonder why we didn't get $15 minimum wage. Because they're all raising money from the guys who don't want to increase the minimum wage. And we play musical chairs and put these children in one awful detention facility to the next. That's what's happening at the border. The things that got him banned, he's still spreading. So presumably, I think it's reasonable to say that if you allow him back on the website, he's going to do it again. Any legal voter that we deem not willing to vote for my side shouldn't vote because it'll replace me that's supposed to vote for my side. That's not how voting works, that's not how democracy yeah. works. And while many people following today's political news can get discouraged about the direction of the nation and the world, that's not us. At TYT, we're genuinely optimistic about the future and with good reason. Today, wide majorities of Americans agree with our progressive stances on issues ranging from healthcare and education to climate, immigration, and wages. The rising generation of young people are also overwhelmingly progressive in their political beliefs and policy objectives. And they're increasingly flexing their muscle as voters and activists to demand change from our elected officials. The traditional mainstream media is mostly AWOL. They, along with the government and many other cherished institutions, have been captured by corporate interests. Audiences sense that they're not getting the whole story or even the truth from once trusted outlets, whether broadcasting cable TV news networks or national newspapers and magazines. The Republicans say we will serve our corporate masters at all costs, including killing democracy, yet here we are. Where else do you hear that? You hear that on NBC, on ABC, on CBS? You hear it nowhere. They don't wanna talk about money in politics because it's really hard to pass judgment when your media organization is funded by fossil fuel companies. The antidote is the Young Turks. Unlike mainstream corporate outlets, we're not beholden to corporate advertisers, to defense contractors, to Wall Street, or to Big Pharma. And we don't carry water for the Republican or Democratic parties. So watch us Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, and join the thousands of progressives around the globe who tune in every day for TYT's unmatched, award-winning content and see what it's like to experience a news organization that only answers to you. I'll continue to sit, I'm gonna continue to stand with the people that are being oppressed. The president labeled him a son of a bitch. I don't think it's good uh, to be a distraction to your team. To stand proudly for the national anthem. You know, some of these people need to move to another country. Well, you shouldn't be playing, you shouldn't be there. Maybe you shouldn't be in the country. The president is put in place to amplify the racists in this country. Black men and boys are killed at an exponentially higher rate than white men and boys, as outlined by PBS. Black people are most likely to be killed by police found mappingpoliceviolence.org. 
Personally, my biggest gripe is not saying how sports and politics have been attached at the hip. From the jockey syndrome, to the Negro Leagues, to Tommy Smith and John Carlos, Muhammad Ali, to modern day and everything in between. This is not an escape. It is a reflection of reality and a reflection of the times. Everything that we've accomplished over the years is because of our members who've allowed us to remain independent of corporate interests and reach 20 million followers. Now is the time to bring as many people into the progressive movement as possible. We're inviting you to be the change and help bring a community powered progressive change machine to life. Details are at tyt.com slash change. If you're a member, thank you, we need you to remain so. If you're one of the thousands of viewers out there who's not a member yet, the time has come for you to join now. We need you more than ever, tyt.com slash change. All right, welcome back. We got a lot more of show left. Good to have every single one of you with me. Um, don't forget if you missed the airing of XL Bullpen with me and Charlie Kirk debating, download it now. Go now. The full one hour and 40 minutes plus. I promise you, you will not regret it. You can go to ACAST for the podcast, Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie, or wherever you get your podcast from. Please do that. Make sure you rate us five, okay? Thank you. Uh, the conversation, uh, don't forget, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Time, tyt.com slash live. Before the Young Turks, Jank talks to a Maryland state delegate about his efforts to remove cops from schools. Make sure to subscribe and watch all the interviews, youtube.com slash tyt conversation. And Indisputable merchandise. I wish you Karen Wood on deck. I won't stop tease on deck. Okay, make sure you get yours now. Shop tyt.com, shop tyt.com, and it is right there. Let me read some of these amazing comments. I have Kelly O'Hara. Sorry, everyone, no poem today. I gotta say it in plain language. You have to be skeptical. You have to be a special, excuse me, kind of cold to kill someone in front of kids and then wait for the cops like nothing happened. What the hell? Uh, Jerry Abend the Black Dragon. Do the police think we live in a video game? Yeah. YouTube Super Chat, Domino Dent, John Claude Van Dummy. Shaking my head. I'll break it down says, She's helping traffic young girls because she's a woman, so she's supposedly more trustworthy. Yeah, and that's the the guy who put the post, he did not really go into that element of it. But clearly, according to the back and forth text messages, she was pulling or allegedly pulling this 15 year old in to have relations with her husband as well. All right, see here, where's Q? Gotta get her, go get her. Um, Samuel Vimes, any studies about ivermectin against carinitis? We need to do some research on that. Twitch, two man underscore 1051. The guy wasn't even under arrest, but charged him for resisting. That's the way it goes. You know, they planned that whole thing, I believe, from top to bottom. Uh, Jax Drax, he learned to fight at the Karen Academy. Um, fat, <laughs> fat guy named uh, Tiny, John Claude Van Don't. All right, let me bring your attention to a really, really horrific story. Young Asian woman is punched in the face, busted lip, her teeth fractured, multiple injuries. All of this happened. White male comes up to Jennifer Chin. Let me do this. I want to show you the video first. Here it is. He assaults me. 
He assaults me. 911. He assaults me. 911. Yeah, I will. Then deal with him. I will. What the actual? 911. What the actual? 911. I said call 911. You're harassing me. You are the one who physically assaulted me. You call 911. You're harassing me. What are you talking about? You hit my friend in the. I've never touched your, your friend. What's your name? I never touched your friend. You're harassing here. me. Hundred percent. Then they'll see you're a complete liar. Look at the cameras. What's your friend's name? a liar. No. You just how young assaulted you my friend. I didn't touch your friend. It's all on camera. She's harassing me. Crazy white chick. <laughs> Multiple witnesses say they saw this man punch this young woman. Multiple witnesses. Surveillance camera caught the assault. He's walking away saying, call 911, you are harassing me. Now, obviously in his very privileged mind, he believes that if the police come, they're going to believe him over her. Let me give you a little background to this very scary incident, this crime that took place in LA. The incident left Miss Jennifer Chen, who's a Canadian national with multiple physical injuries and mental, mental trauma. She filed a report with the Los Angeles Police Department at West LA, which promised to contact her once a detective is assigned to her case. This young lady said she was diagnosed with a concussion, lip laceration, dental pain, and multiple tooth root fractures. With one already dead and needing a root canal treatment. The other two front teeth might die tomorrow or years from now and will need root canals and veneers or extraction and implant, she added. Chen could not remember her assailant, her assailant's exact words. She said, I do not recall, uh, I do recall, excuse me. I do recall him saying effing Asians or words to that effect. We have seen the rise of Asian hate in this country, much of it perpetuated by a political narrative to seek division. And that's exactly what you see happening in the societal construct around us. Now naturally, we wanna make sure that justice is served. Um, As of now, the attacker has not been fully identified. We cannot confirm that guy's name. We do want him to be brought to justice, we want this woman to have justice. In order to do that, there's a process, it's called due process. He will have the right to face his accuser in a court of law. He has been accused. There is an active police report saying he assaulted this woman, multiple witnesses and surveillance footage. We have to all be outraged by things like this. And let me also say this about the strength of this young lady. I want you to put yourself in her shoes for a moment. I've seen some of the back and forth on social media. Some people are literally asking, what does she say to him? What does she do? She was in a vehicle, it doesn't matter. He committed an act of violence and then tried to cover it up. Why is that cover up important? Evidence of a guilty conscience, that's why. That part is very important. And then he's in his gaslight routine. He wants her to seem crazy. Oh No, 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 you and uh, this white woman saying I did, these are crazy people. 
I'm a white man, you must believe me over these women. Um, we're gonna continue to follow this story uh, to see exactly what will be done in the space of justice as it relates to this young lady. Let me give you another story where justice is being served. We covered this before, Miami officers who decided to attack two people, okay? They were charged with misdemeanors. We say it on this show, that is not enough, damn it. What they did warranted felony charges. Well, guess what? Those charges have now been upgraded. Let me take you to Miami. Three Miami Beach officers now face felony charges for what they did in their brutal arrest of two black men. Let's go to the first video. Here, Sergeant Perez comes back. You'll see this right here, watch there. Okay. Did you see that kick there? Okay. There it is in, in, in slow motion replay. So that's three times by Sergeant Officer Perez. So for these actions, Miami Beach Police Sergeant Jose Perez is being charged today. We then have Miami Beach Officer Kevin Perez. This video appears to show Kevin Perez kicking Mr. Crudup at least four times. Let's see. You see the back there? That's Officer. That's a different angle. These are body worn cameras at this point. Yeah, okay, uh, the victim here was physically assaulted by multiple police officers. They do this press conference, they say, hey, we're going to give them misdemeanor charges. No way in the hell that's a misdemeanor. And we said that on indisputable, no way in the hell is that a misdemeanor. Now, the prosecution agrees with us, it was actually a felony. But that wasn't the only felony, there's more. Um, Vaughn, a bystander, was recording the arrest of this victim. Not breaking the law, not committing a crime, trying to be a good citizen, trying to be a responsible person. Um, backing away at the instruction of an officer when one of the officers decided to tackle Vaughn to the floor and repeatedly punch him. Here's the video of that. So you see, we think the officer's here saying back up, and you'll see him take about four steps back with his camera. Now you see Officer Sabater uh, running in and tackling him there. If you hold him right there. Now what you see is after he's tackled, he, this is actually, this, these are his shorts and that's a fist right there. And watch, watch what happens next. Now what you see there is a series of punches in the back rib, air, rib cage area or kidney area, but it's on the back. You see that there? Now we have the body-worn camera video of Officer David Rivas, who appears to show Mr. Vaughn actively backing away from the Officer Rivas. Remember, you saw that initially. Uh, off, off, but nonetheless, Officer Sabater uh, then pins Mr. Vaughn against the column. Well, approximately 12 seconds later, while he's being handcuffed, it's Officer Rivas, thank you, who's repeatedly striking Mr. Vaughn, as I said, in the ribcage area. Yeah, um, so three of those cops, their charges have been upgraded to felonies. All of those cops should be charged with felonies, even if the felony is violation of oath of office, the felony version of the statute. Every single one of them are responsible for what happened to those two individuals. The culture has to transform. Let me show you the police chief. Art Acevedo, that's your police chief. He's the guy, he's the man in charge, Buck stops with him. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay.
You know what the progressive movement needs? It needs a little energy, a little pizzazz, maybe a little caffeine. Oh, coffee. But what if it was too strong coffee? Yes, new too strong coffee.com slash TYT. Look, this helps progressive causes. It's also organic and fair trade. So you've got peace of mind that it was done right and it happens to taste great. So check it out right now at too strong coffee.com slash TYT. The 300 million is a pretty good number, pretty good number. Well, that's the size of the US population. You know what our next target is? The size of the entire world. We just crossed 5 billion views on YouTube. I mean, imagine 10 years ago thinking one day. We <laughs> looked at you like, are you nuts? Young Turks has just passed uh, another milestone. 15 billion views. Damn. All right, lots of comments. You guys are the best. I'm gonna read a few comments uh, from our members. Mr. M Methuselah says on YouTube, Super Chat, uh, thanks for all the important work you do for TYT for the movement. Do you know who had the first Super Chat when I got back from vacation? You won't be su surprised to find out. Rob Shively, what do you know? Rob says rejoice for Dragon Daddy has returned. This question sent to us by Izzy Sanchez Jr. Is it me or is Meghan McCain talking as fast as Ben Shapiro? Is that the way the right tries to look smart and intellectual? Well, yes. And Michael Nathan writes it on Twitter. Did Anna choose Jenk's outfit today? I'm sure it wasn't Jenk himself. Man bun Jenk in skinny jeans says, so now Anna has pointed out. <laughs> Okay, that's his handle. T. Joyce 1971 saying Donald Trump is good at pulling out of things, NAFTA, the Iran deal, NATO. It's just too bad Fred Trump didn't. All right, let me do a little quick plug here. It's not even a plug, I'm bragging, okay? I'm bragging, watch me. We have a channel on YouTube, a whole channel devoted just to the Young Turks. It's badass, right? Wow, man. I can see the void. You guys are rock stars. Unbelievable, Senator Sanders. Welcome to Rebel Headquarters. Man, you guys are amazing. We gave you what you wanted. Okay. Speaking of shirts. I have a surprise. <laughs> you reached a lot of people. You are the Young Turks. And we have spread that progressive message wide and far. Let's keep it going. to engage in transparent conversations with those who do not think like me. We also make sure that you know what's happening not only nationally, but in your local area. Make sure you tune in to Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie, Monday through Friday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Cool news, shopdyt.com now has books. Uh, there's a whole bunch of books there. Uh, you're gonna be shocked to find out that they're largely progressive. <laughs> of course! Ryan Grimm's book, we've got people is there. It's a fantastic story from Jesse Jackson to Bernie Sanders to AOC that explains the progressive movement probably better than any book I've ever read. Speaking of awesome books, my dad's got a book out called The Original Young Turk, where he goes from the poorest olive farmer you ever met in your life to living the American dream.
Welcome back to Indisputable. Let me read some of these amazing comments and thank you for engaging with the program live. Just Be Anti-Racist says, this is why women don't report assaults to the police. It's a damn shame that we, especially women of color, need video proof of crimes against us. R.S. King Black Dragon, I'm really curious. Uh, what does hatred accomplish in the minds of these individuals? Being nice gives a warm feeling. Help me understand what hatred gives. Well, if you are a hateful person, being hateful gives you a warm feeling. So you can't understand their mindset because you're not a hateful person. All right, YouTube Super Chat. Um, they need to serve some time in jail with individuals that they had arrested in the past. And I'm sure they will get some of that treatment back. <laughs> yeah, that never happens. They always get placed in protective custody for obvious reasons. Meet up, speak up. I'm glad the cops uh, were charged. They should be banned from ever being a police officer. That's the idea. Uh, Twitch, Cave Bat Software. TYT, love your coverage, Dr. Richie. Absolutely excellent delivery and indisputable facts. Thank you for that. Um, Progressive B, I'm glad I didn't join the force after leaving the army now. Or maybe I should so we have more good ones. See, that's, that's the other thinking, right? Because if you show up, damn it, I know at least one person is right on the force. All right, that's how you do it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, I have Mr. Bill White, CEO, Constellations Group's chairman and CEO of Buckhead City Committee. Good day, sir. Welcome, Dr. Rishi. How are you, sir? Great to I'm doing quite doing quite well, man. You know, there are a lot of people who are watching this across the country and outside of the country. They may not be aware of what's happening in Atlanta, Georgia, and some other cities. To be quite honest with you, where there's an existing city, and a certain group from that city would like to leave the city, and then create their own city. And typically these movements, I can go from Stockbridge and beyond, are primarily white residents or the white community in a majority black city or a more diverse city. And so it obviously the optics of it brings significant ridicule. But you're saying this is about the spike in crime. So if you would tell viewers what you all are doing in this divorce proceeding from the city of Atlanta and why? Well, thank you, thank you. And I understand why that unfortunately seems to be the case. But I think the, the families in Buckhead who are, I think we are the most diverse community in the city of Atlanta. We are by the latest census numbers, a little over 20% African American. And we have for many years felt that we have not really had a seat at the table. Uh, Rashad, and it's been a very difficult thing for a lot of the families. I'm new to the area. My husband and I moved here about three years ago, and I'm a marriage guy. I've been married to the same person for 21 years, so I believe in marriage. I think uh, you work things out. You try your hardest to uh, stay in love and keep it fresh every day. Uh, but there are some times where we can't work things out, and it seems like that we don't have a voice at the table. We're not being listened to. I will tell you this, the idea that Buckhead would divorce Atlanta and that we've been talking about this for over a year now. And for the city of Atlanta to say, wow, that would bankrupt Atlanta, it would hurt our bonds. You know, there'd be a tidal wave, the little kids in the school will be forever damaged. The fact that they have not even called us to talk to us about staying together is very telling. It's very disturbing. We would love to meet with Atlanta and talk about these things, but they haven't reached out to us. And I think that says a lot. I think that tells the people of Buckhead that they really don't care about Buckhead, that they only care about the money that is going to City Hall. And that's a shame because I think this will, one, initially be very disturbing for the city of Atlanta for Buckhead to depart. I do think at the, at the end of the day, Dr. Rishi, this will actually help Atlanta. And I'd love to talk to you about that because I see what you do with your foundation. I'm working on many things with a very interesting and diverse cultural group to try to bring some help to the inner city here in Atlanta once we get this up and running. 
All right, so let me, and I appreciate everything you said. Let me correct you on the numbers. Um, so Buckhead is not the most diverse um, based on the last count, and you may have different numbers. Buckhead is 77.5% white. Uh, it is 11% black, 6% Asian, uh, 3% other, and 2.2% two or more uh, races. Yeah, those, those numbers are from uh, 10 years ago. The new okay. numbers. Coming out with the current census, it's okay. It'll, it's a little bit of an adjustment, but the point is, um, we are really experiencing incredible issues from a from a standpoint of our taxes going up, from there being a lack of any control with the crime that's going on in Buckhead. And I also think that when you look at the crime, the crime is colorblind. It is really affecting all people of all types, all walks of life, all cultures. And everybody, including South Atlanta, everybody I talk to down there, including the religious leaders and the community leaders, all they want is literally they want more police on the street. And it's so hard to hire a police officer in Atlanta right now. It's very difficult when 300 of the officers have quit in the last 12 months. It's very difficult to explain that the remaining officers, well, violent crime is through the roof in Atlanta, arrests are down. So what yeah, so that? so let's yeah, okay. Mr. Chairman, let's definitely talk about that. Um, you know this because you work in the space of uh, reform and remedy. You cannot arrest yourself out of socioeconomic dysfunction. <clears throat> that many of the crimes that you're referring to, especially the ones that are highlighted as uh, crimes of note, are burglaries, um, thefts, uh, and then you have violent crimes, which typically. Um, have been more random in scope than targeted um, arguments at the local mall, Linux and Buckhead and other places. Well, if you're talking about a socioeconomic dynamic, right? How do you hire more cops to control that or to stop it? Remember, cops are reactionary agents to crime. They do not prevent crime by themselves. So if you're saying, well, we need to hire more cops and that's the issue and that's why crime is going up. And that has, and I'm not saying you're saying that, I am saying it is the narrative. And I've moderated multiple Atlanta mayoral debates. And everyone from Buckhead that's running for mayor, which is ironic to me because if you all become a city, they can't be mayor of Atlanta anymore. Everyone who's running for mayor from Buckhead, running for mayor of Atlanta, they're saying hire more cops. Even the former mayor has a hire more cops plan. But where's the rest of it, brother? Where's the let's target the underlying conditions that lead to the criminality that we see in the first place? Where's that at? Okay, so two things on that, and I think it's very important that you point that out, is one of the things that you've heard is you can't arrest yourself out of the problem. I will share with you, this is my personal feeling that we haven't had enough arrests yet. That's number one. Number two, you cannot institute law enforcement and to hope that people will comply with the law when you make announcements like our current mayor has made and that the current police department has made. So number one, they have said we do not arrest shoplifters at any of these malls. So let me provide some context of that for those who are watching. So one, I understand your thoughts and your feelings, but let me give you some facts. Chicago has more police officers than in the history of its charter. They have more cops and those cops are paid more money than they have ever been paid before. Chicago still has one of the highest unsolved or non-solved rates as far as murder and violent crimes. And crime continues to increase in Chicago because they have not dedicated the political and financial resources to attack in a smart way the issues that lead to that crime in the first place. They are not able. With more cops, more arrests, more money, more in salary to decrease the crime in Chicago. So right. that's a, let, let, allow me to finish, sir. That is a fact. Actually, actually you interrupted me. So what Well, I was, sir, it is my show, Mike. It's uh, my show, Bill. Excuse me. You're going to cut me off. Uh, this will end pretty quick. Well, so, sir, if you want to, listen, listen here, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. If you say, Mr. Chairman. If you say excuse me. If Mr. You, Chairman, excuse me, sir. Arrest a shop. Mr. Chairman. What goes up in Buckhead Mr. Chairman. is shoplifting, Rashad. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'm going to continue what I was saying. You're now, gonna, I want to remind you and everyone else. You're not going to come when we, in my point. Well, that's fine, sir. You can take your toys and run home. Run, run to Buckhead if you want to. I can, I can definitely get you back on the show at a later time if you I, don't want to stay here. Anywhere. But in part, I, when I have I, these. 
Sir, will you will you allow me a few minutes on my show, sir? Will you allow me one minute at least? You were having me on as a guest on your show. I am. I do have you on as a guest. You're being disrespectful. Allow me to finish my sentence. I will allow you to finish, sir, but I wanted to point something out. Go ahead. Um, the reason why I wanted to point something out, number one, when I have these debates, I have to play part moderator because I am the host of the show and part debater. So respect that element of the program. I will always give you enough time to fully rebuttal whatever I say. When you said that the city of Atlanta has said they are not going to arrest shoplifters, that is that is a misrepresentation of what the former chief said, the current chief has said, and others who work in city council. So what what they, they have said, sir, what, what they have said, they okay, what they have said is that these businesses, which by the way, the city of Buckhead increases by twice or three times population every day because over 90% of the folks that are in Buckhead travel to Buckhead and then they travel out of Buckhead. So it's one of those kind of cities. So what they've said is that they will not allocate inappropriate resources, meaning a, a huge flux in resources when these private companies are well in position to hire private security as it relates to crimes like shoplifting and theft to secure their own property. They said something very similar to other parts of the city as well, because they are trying to tackle some of the more violent crimes that take place. I understand shoplifting and theft is a big deal, but these stores, which are the richest in the city, these stores do have the ability to hire a security guard to have a presence there. That's no. what the chief of police said They're in not. the press conference that she gave before yeah. she uh, resigned. Yeah, right. So will you allow me to address that? Yep. Okay, so number one, they announced they're not arresting shoplifters. And that's not what they're saying is, hey, let's let the security companies do it. The security companies do not have arrest power. So those folks who are being stopped for shoplifting are immediately released by the security company out of the building. And unfortunately, those people come right back because they know there's no law enforcement behind that. They're not being prosecuted. They're not being arrested, so what goes up in Buckhead? All right, once again, misleading. Security officers do have the right in the city of Atlanta to detain. No, but they are not. They are not doing that at those malls. Okay, they're not being. They don't have arrest power, <laughs> sir. No security guard has arrest powers without being post certified. So the shoplifting goes up, and the shoplifting continues, and people now are not going to those malls, and the malls are going. So broke. you want to leave the city of Atlanta because of shoplifters well, in the mall? The second thing is that she has a policy where she says you do not chase any felonious activity in a car. So you know what goes up in Buckhead? Carjackings. So carjackings are through the roof. I know my sister-in-law was at a gas station, an incident happened. People I know who've been carjacked at gunpoint. And so if you let the criminals know that carjackers will not be chased, guess what goes up, Rashad, in Buckhead? Carjackings. If you understand about the noise abatement issues on Far Road and Peachtree Road, nobody's sleeping in Buckhead. So you could have a $2,000 apartment or a $20 million house, and you're not sleeping well because the street racers and the drag racers and the cruisers are coming to Atlanta, putting holes in their mufflers and driving back and forth up and down everybody's road keeping everybody up at night. Now, Buckhead, let me tell you a couple of things. You're going to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law for shoplifting. If you are carjacked- Prosecuted by who? By the Buckhead City Court, not Fulton sir, County. Sir, Fulton County. Sir, the crimes that you're talking step about, Step into sir? the and hear the undisputable facts. You will be prosecuted sir? by the Buckhead City Court. Allow you, me to respond. Sure. You all have a plan to create a police force. You all have a plan, right? And a court system and four judges. And we're contracting with the jail about four hours south of here. Okay, you all have a plan to coordinate a judicial system. And by statute of Georgia, your city court is called a limited jurisdiction court. Municipal court, right. That's correct, brother. Which means the crimes that you're telling me about won't even fall under the jurisdiction of the court you are proposing to create. No, it will go back to Fulton County. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, we won't be arresting you for those things though. We'll be arresting you for municipal violations. And therefore we can sentence you to time and send you out of bucket to jail. No, sir, you, you can't do a damn thing, sir. No. You're not a judge, nor a prosecutor. Well, you can I, do nothing. Now, I can tell you what Buckhead City judges are gonna do. Okay, that's what you believe. You don't even have a Buckhead City judge. You got somebody in mind already? That's against the law, brother. 
You already got them picked out? Yeah, I've talked to the four judges that we're talking to about- So you're already telling judges that they are going to be appointed? I'm talking to everybody that's interested in making- Okay, you realize that's a that's a violation of the ethical code, correct? Code, yep, that's not a violation of any code, you're incorrect. I, brother, I will send you the code. You're already engaging judges who will be appointed that have to go through a process of appointment from a mayor, council, and a vote. You who hold no position in the city government structure whatsoever, you're telling me that you are choosing the judges who will sit on the bench in Buckhead, correct? No, I said I'm talking to judges who would be interested in seeing Buckhead safe and prosperous. Yes. What would your position be if there is a city of Buckhead? I don't know, what would you like me to do? You wanna be mayor? I listen, I think whoever the mayor is, has gotta be somebody that has the shared values of putting the smack down on this crime and leading Buckhead forward with growing prosperously and lovingly with its sister city, the city of Atlanta. What are you going to do to address as we talked about underlying issues? Because once again, you cannot arrest yourself out of a social economic dysfunction. And I know many, I know many of your fellow colleagues on your committee and some that are part that are a part of other committees that have a very similar scope. And we have talked about what to do to address especially youth related violence uh -huh. at a fourth level rather than criminal uh, criminalization. See, now that's something I would love to come meet with you on. And okay. on. I would love to get you involved in what we're doing. I love your amazing CV, your bio, you are part of the fabric of this great community. You are a thought leader, you are a very inspiring person to me. I, I, I'm afraid next time I might need to bring the boxing gloves. <laughs> <laughs> never that brother, never that man. But uh, for instance, with the water boys, we are talking with uh, some very interesting people who are interested in keeping these young men and women who are out on our streets being pimped by these street gangs from having to go out there, maybe giving them a different path. There's a lot of money in Buckhead and there's a lot of lovely people in Atlanta and Buckhead who would love to help these children. And I know that you're one of them. Yep. And I would like to be one of those people too, first and foremost. Here's what I wanna do, and thank you for saying that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for saying that, because you know I've worked with the Atlanta Water Boys. I was front and center when they were talking about locking them up. I said, no, no, you can't talk about locking anybody up when you have disrupted all opportunity for them and you're not providing another solution. And we're in the middle of a pandemic and all they're trying to do is get the lights cut back on, okay? Yeah. So, so you and I- you partner with me on that, at least that part. If we do get up and running, we're gonna need help. And I'm gonna be the first guy to call you. So let's do this, brother. I wanna make sure um, you exchange numbers with me. So I'm gonna ask you to stay beyond the show to do that, cuz I'm gonna follow up with you directly. And I'm glad you said that because at least that's a common, that's a commonality we can all agree to, right? Yes, sir, and I mean that from the heart, thank I you. I know you do, that's, that's why I'm actually asking you to stay beyond the show so we can exchange information. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming on Indisputable. Love your show. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.